how do I select a quality guitar? Oh man, such a loaded question. So, okay, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great question, right? And, and how do I select a quality guitar? First of all, Joe, I'm glad you're asking that question. That's a great question to ask because that, that's gonna allow you to play guitar a lot easier, a lot better, and have a lot more fun with it. Um, but the, the one part that's kind of missing that we need to define here is what in your mind is a quality guitar? Now, in general, uh, we can just assume that anybody who wants to play guitar wants to be able to play easier, wants to have or put forth less effort to play it, wants it to sound better, and wants it to be more fun. So let's just go for those three qualities, or excuse me, those four qualities. Uh, and I'm gonna break down a few different categories of different guitars that you can be looking at. And then of course, we'll talk about price range, et cetera. So remind me, Brock, if I forget, we're gonna talk about categories, and then we're gonna talk about price ranges. So um, in general, you depending on what style of music you wanna play, uh, really is gonna kind of dictate what type of guitar you want. So if you're into stuff like Pink Floyd and Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan and, and uh, even stuff like Nirvana um, or anything like that, something like a Strat style guitar is probably gonna serve you better uh, just because that's what's been used in blues based type rock and blues based type music. Um, if you are interested in something like shredding or playing really fast or playing like 80s rock, 80s music, something like an Ibanez, uh, something with a flatter neck like the actual fretboard radi actually has a radius, I mean it's curved, and uh, fretboards that are flatter actually help you play faster because all of the fretboard is closer to all of your fingers. That's really small, I can't show you right here, but essentially all you need to know is that flatter fretboard equals faster playing, uh, faster, more accurate playing. So uh, that's, that's kind of more if, you wanna, if you're interested in playing really fast, if you're interested in playing shred, style music etc um, and yes there are exceptions we're making uh, this is kind of a general rule right and then on the other end of the spectrum you have guitars like uh, big jazz boxes or big jazz guitars the fancy looking guitars with little you know f holes on each side um, if you're interested in you know listening to somebody like joe pass or if you like traditional jazz or john coltrane or uh miles davis or anything like that um, that's probably going to be the, the realm that you're going to want to look in. And then, of course, you have a Les Pauls. Les Pauls definitely works for blues, the rock uh, arena, that kind of thing as well. But I think those are those are really the biggest categories of guitars, I think. What do you think I'm missing anything, Brock, as far as, like, the bigger categories? No, yeah. I mean, that, you know, we have, you know, you get Fenders, you got Strats, Tellys, you've got, you know, yeah. I mean, acoustic guitars, I think, would be. Acoustic guitar, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. So yeah, acoustic guitar, I mean, I'm sure we'll get to this question later, but a lot of people say, or they ask, should I learn on electric or acoustic first? Because uh, some people say that, you know, maybe their teacher told them that uh, acoustic guitar makes an electric guitar easier to play. Well, maybe in the sense of it makes you, it could make your fingers stronger because the strings are thicker on acoustic. But my motto is why waste time? Just go go directly to what you want to do. Do you want to play an electric guitar? Get an electric guitar, play it. If you want to play an acoustic, uh, mainly guys who want to play acoustic are interested in strumming, maybe singing when they play, maybe playing around a campfire or something like that where you don't need an amp, um, or they're just interested in like finger style type guitar, then yeah, go for an acoustic or even a classical if you like that kind of thing. That's kind of another category as well. But um, I think that, that pretty much covers all the, the categories. Now, when you, when you're looking at price and we're talking about quality of guitar, um, these days, honestly, there are so many guitar makers that make pretty quality stuff at lower price ranges. Uh, in fact, my dad plays guitar. He bought a, I think it's called a Wolf. I, I never heard of him before, but a Wolf brand guitar. And it was like a Paul Reed Smith copy. Uh, and it was $500. They polished the frets. They set it all up. They did everything. And it feels great. Sounds great. It's 500 bucks. So there are definitely a lot of quality options out there nowadays, um, but that doesn't really give an answer to the question. So at the end of the day, what you're really looking for is a guitar that, that you can pick up that inspires you to keep playing it. That's really it. That's the criteria. It really doesn't matter if that, I had a guitar, no kidding, that was $3. I looked it up on eBay, it was worth $3. Uh, it was it was a like a novelty acoustic classical guitar that that, like my uncle gave me or something like that. It was worth nothing, literally. And I love playing it just because of how it sounded, how it felt, et cetera. So that's the number one, qual the number one quality. 
is if you can go to a store, or if you can go somewhere like that and touch the guitar and play it, uh, and it makes you want to keep playing it, there's your, there's your first sign right there that that's a good guitar for you. Um, but when we actually talk about the tech, the tech aspects, um, when you look at the frets, like are the frets uh, in good condition? I mean, it may be hard to judge that when you're just starting or if you're, if you're trying to ask this question about what's a quality guitar. Um, but the, the most important thing really is, is aside from does it make you want to keep playing it, it's really how the guitar is set up. I'll jump in real quick. I mean, that's, you could have a, a $3,000 guitar and if it's not set up correctly, it's going to make, I mean, it's going to be difficult to play. It's not going to feel like a quality guitar. Um, or you could be playing on a really cheap guitar that could be played a lot better, but if you don't have it set up properly, then, then it's, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna feel like garbage. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the dog. So in general, what does setup mean? A lot of, a lot of newer players don't really know what a setup means. It just basically means how the guitar is adjusted. So these are called saddles. Um, you can raise and lower the saddles. And of course, what that does is raise and lower the strings off the fretboard. The higher the strings are, the harder it is to play. Um, the lower the strings are, in general, the easier it is to play until you get to a certain point. Now, there are a lot of nuances. Uh, you know, we don't have time. I, I wish we could spend an hour on this one question because we definitely could. We could spend hours on this one question. Mm -hmm. and then, in fact, you know, maybe we should create a course on setting up the guitar, helping people get their guitar in, in, a, in an order where it's so much easier and more fun to play. Um, and that's, the yeah, there you go, there you go. But uh, that's, a, that's, that's another topic that it, it's definitely worth exploring because I think most guitar players, and I was like this too, are afraid of adjusting their guitar, afraid of adjusting the truss rod, uh, mm -hmm. this little thing in here, because they think they're gonna break something. And it's just, you know, it's just generally not true. But back to the setups. So um, this little piece here is called a nut. The lower your strings are basically to the fretboard, the easier it's going to be able to it's going to be to play. Um, but your fret size, the bigger your frets are, the easier it is to be more accurate and play fast. The smaller your frets are, the more your finger is actually going to like drag on the actual fretboard itself, and that's indicative of more like kind of uh, classical guitars or vintage guitars or older guitars have smaller frets. But anyway, that's that's really all you need to know. Um, what I would do if I was gonna, if I was telling somebody to go to a guitar store or something and pick out something, um, find something that interests you based on the style that you want to play, or the styles that you want to play. Within that category, um, tr just try to pick up as many guitars as you can and find ones that make you want to keep playing them. Do, do you like how it looks? Like, is it inspiring for you to want to pick it up and want to play it? Because that really matters. Like, if you, in order to practice guitar, you have to keep picking it up. So having a guitar that makes you want to pick it up means you're going to get better a lot faster. Um, and then the last thing is just get your guitar set up. Go literally just go to a guitar store, pay somebody to set it up for you. It's so worth it. It might cost you somewhere between, you know, 40 to 50 to even a hundred dollars for a really good person, but it's, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. So anyway, that's what I would have to say about that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, real quick, Greg Lundy, uh, down in the chat, uh, sorry, Lalande. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Just had my 30 old Fender Strat refretted. I love it. This is mine. So it definitely makes a difference. Yeah. And uh, literally what Jeff is talking about there is having these metal pieces, these frets ripped out and put new ones in. And that probably means because he's been playing it so much, he's worn the frets out. So good job there, Jeff. Yeah. And that's something I don't think most people would even think about um, doing no. No. an older guitar refretted. So. Cool. Well, that's a great, great question. 